Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This week, uh, still have a lot of Italian pens up, but the pens I have had the last few weeks are starting to run dry, so we, we should be getting some excitement soon. So let's dive into them. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. Uh, and if you'd like to discuss any of the pens brought up today or uh, any other issues I bring up today, because who knows what I'm going to say, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So let's take a look at what I have inked up this week. So of course, left to right. First, in response to a uh, a viewer who is purchasing a Platinum President, I felt like I should bring out my Platinum President to celebrate with him. Uh, so, Platinum President. I've actually had a few people bring this pen up. Um, looks kind of like a, another pen that I've had here recently, a Moster Pen Kala, which will be appearing as a review in the next couple of weeks. This is a uh, Caveco Dia 2. I've already reviewed this pen. The link for any of the pens that I've reviewed before is in the video description. I have a Parker Dual Fold, which was a review this week, actually, although filmed quite a long time ago because it's totally different ink in the review. Keiko Edge, which is almost empty. Um, Lamy Ion. Prima 61, which is a Hungarian pen. I have a Pen BBS, which... That was an unboxing recently. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what week. But anyway, recent unboxing. Almost empty. I thought it would be empty for this video, but isn't quite. And actually, it's worth some other discussion, too. So we'll come back to that. Visconti Homo Sapiens, uh, almost empty, I'm sure, as much as I've written with it. Uh, Aurora Style. And last week, I unveiled this one after a many months long hiatus, a Platinum 3776. Those are the pens that I'm using this week. Uh, let's take a look at how they write. As always, Bomo Art Journal from Hungary. So let's take a look at them. I wonder if that fly that just flew this way showed up on the camera. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to find out now. So the first pen up is my Platinum President. I've had this for a while now. A pen I very much enjoy. Um, I love it. I, you know, I'm really tempted by the Platinum Izumo, which has a very similar nib. I'm uh, not so tempted by the price. Or I should say, Platinum Azumo, actually, it's the same nib. But anyway, this one is a broad, which was ground by Dan Smith of the Nib Smith to a cursive italic. And quite a nice writer. Uh, you're going to see in a few of these pens, I, I can't remember how many, but a few of them, you're going to see that I'm using uh, some of the sparkly inks. This is a Giban. And I'm sorry, I did not look up how to pronounce this one, so this may be butchered. 1789. I bought a lot of th uh, samples just recently because I was curious. Emma Thiest. Ooh, I need three lines for this ink. D. Oh, sorry, D. Le Oral. I'll pick this up after the ink dries so you can check out whether the sparkles show up or not. You know, that's an open question. Speaking of sparkles, I'm going to do this with my Caveco Dia 2 and hopefully show you one of the drawbacks of sparkly inks. So we're looking at the cartridge here. Converter, sorry. Someday we'll focus. There we go. We'll turn it over. Oh, what's that? Yeah, that's one of the problems with sparkly inks. Sparkles are suspended. And uh, so what you have to do, what I'm doing off screen, is uh, you have to shake them up to get them loose and suspend it in the ink again. So this is a Caveco, oops, 
think that was my fault, not the pen's fault. Caveco Dia 2. It's abroad. Uh, the ink in it is Jirban. J. Herbin. Uh, Emerald of Shivor. Another sample I just recently purchased. Uh, I was writing a letter the other night. Uh, this is one of the 1670 series. I was writing a letter the other night and uh, uh, on Tomoe River paper. Man, this ink is beautiful. Not only sparkles, but very nice red to sheen to it. So uh, I was impressed by that. I uh, suddenly find myself... Actually, I was impressed by this one too. I'm suddenly finding myself tempted by these and I have not bought a sparkly ink in a few years. And speaking of sparkles we're impressed by, see I'm going to rotate this really quick. <laughs> Maybe we'll shake the sparkles loose. Uh, I reviewed this pen this week, but uh, re filmed a review quite some time ago. This is a Parker Dual Fold. Uh, as I pointed out in the review, you can purchase them at all sorts of different prices uh, if you're willing to wait. I waited th 33 years to get mine. So this is a Parker Dual Fold Fine Point. I love, even if it didn't have the sparkles, I love this color. But the sparkles are like bonus. So this is a 1798 ink again, Jiban. And every single one of these, I've wanted a bottle. Cornaline. Oh, now we're doing D apostrophe. See, I don't know French at all. Um, what little I know about French comes from studying Spanish. So yes, related, but not the same language. We'll come back to the sparkles. Let's let it dry. Yeah, well, let, let's let it dry. I've been using as my daily writer pen lately this uh, Keiko Edge. I, I have been warned by a couple of my reviewers, actually, that apparently the, the cap has split on some pens. And I will say has not yet happened to mine. But, uh, you know, it could. I'm relatively happy with it. It feels very high quality. It writes very nicely. Looks good, other than the goofy clip. And we'll just say it has black ink because it has the cartridge that was included with the pen. Interestingly, this pen I set aside to clean it, and then I didn't. And then I started writing with it again, and uh, writing like a champ. This is a Lamy Ion. Sort of, I'd say, inspired by the Lamy 2000, but definitely heading in its own direction. And what impressed me is as soon as I started writing with it, it it's been months, it started right up like a champ. Uh, the ink in it is Jirban, again, not a sparkly ink this time, but it is a perfumed ink. Lavand. I think it's just Lavand. Oops, Parfum Lavand. <clears throat> it's a okay color, but it definitely smells attractive. This is a Prima 61, a Hungarian pen. I, I've had a few suggestions about this here, uh, that it could be a price written in there. So I'm gonna give a cl better lit look at it. I was kinda hoping I could review this pen while it was still linked up, but uh, I've refilled it once, but I feel like I don't have enough information. I, I just have not found information on Prima. Maybe I'm a little spoiled because I found a lot of amazing information on my to my Molster Pencala um, through the help of my viewers, actually. This comes with an oblique medium pelican nib, which 
I don't think is original equipment just from the way it fits. So this is a Prima 61 with a Pelican oblique medium nib. And uh, the ink in it, I think I said this is a Giban Lee de Tay. Maybe you can tell what ink I've been buying a lot of samples of lately. And actually I have more bottles of now than I ever would have thought before. And we come to this puppy. Pen BBS 308 slash 266. For reasons that I got into in the view video. Uh, now I've had some comments about the nib tines maybe misaligned. I was going to figure it out before uh, filming this, but then I didn't. Uh, I had some suggestions. One was uh, actually a phone call to my house uh, suggesting that I use a 50 millimeter film lens uh, as a loop, which I tried. It it actually does work, doggone. I, I knew you can turn lenses around and use them in different ways, but I'd never heard of that particular trick, so that was interesting. Um, of course, I mean, I have a physics degree. I, I do know the optics of it. Uh, but it's just not something that ever occurred to me before. So that was interesting. Uh, but I did find a $10 loop, which uh, doesn't look like I brought down here. So uh, we'll have to save it for another time. But uh, actually, now I think about it, I think it's at school. Because <laughs> I, I was using it a little for some a little side non-pen project at school. So I might have to go get that tomorrow. But... Uh, Anyway, so uh, I have the feeling that the tines are misaligned. So uh, some people said they could see it in the video. I rewatched the video in question. Honestly, wasn't seeing it, but that means absolutely nothing. So we'll see. It'll be a chance to learn some nib smoothing. Uh, how to straighten a nib. Um, it's definitely still scratchy, so it needs it. You know, some of those tricks that I, I, I'm a little weaker with nibs when I do pen restoration, so I think those would be good things for me to learn. And, uh, yeah, get my feet wet with a pen that, you know, if I destroy this nib, oh well, I'll replace it with a different nib. Because I do think the pen is gorgeous. Uh, the ink in it is also gorgeous. Private Reserve Avocado. And I like avocados, too. Although, when you live in North Dakota, sometimes getting a decent avocado is a bit of a challenge. Because I seem to get them where they, they're they hard, they're hard, they're hard. And then, whoop, they're brown. And they don't get to that ripe, nice stage. The one grocery store has figured out that, oh, maybe we don't refrigerate them. That'll help them ripen and taste better. Figured the same thing out with tomatoes over the 13 years I've lived in this town. But uh, the other one hasn't quite figured that out yet. Alright, I was frankly surprised this pen still has ink in it. Uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens. I uh, showed you I fixed the My Pen system. Uh, beautiful pen. Kind of a nice, you know, it's big. I don't always go for the really big pens, but I'm happy with this one. Just a nice writer. Um, I don't think as wet as it is, this would be a very good daily writer. But it is a nice writer. So the ink in it, now that I think about it, is actually a French ink, so I'm probably mispronouncing it. Inca Sol, Califolio. A nice brand, apparently, if you like vintage pens, which I do very much. And two more. Um, this one should also be empty, but still cooking, so we'll keep going with it. Aurora Style, uh, one of their lower cost options, but a pen I just think is nice looking. And it writes, uh, I have a hard time calling that broad. 
but it does write very nicely. Uh, the ink in it is Girbon, which I can thank Chris Sains for turning me on to this ink. I, I just think it's so beautiful. Poussier de Lune, Moon Dust. Uh, it works better in some pens than others. This is one of the pens I think it works very well in. And finally, what will be my daily writer when uh, Pen BBS, or I'm sorry, when the Keiko Edge runs out, um, since it's full of black ink anyway, and it's a fine point, Platinum 3776 in the Levant finish. I haven't used it all week. Uh, honestly, I like the soft find better. And I think the soft find could work very well as a daily writer. I think I have to cross my T. I heard a few people yelling there. Uh, so uh, you may have figured out by now that I do an Instagram channel also on uh, IGTV. Uh, it's, it's a once weekly show. I've been thinking about uploading a video or two from there to my YouTube channel just to advertise what I do. I, uh, but, but what it is is I usually take off on what I'm using in pens and use and I'll do a quick show on it. Uh, I'm limited on IGT, IGTV to 10 minutes and I'm limited to the vertical format so you get me like this. And all my writing is like this, but it works. Um, a lot of viewers, it kind of reminds me of the early days when I started taking YouTube seriously and be and getting serious about being a reviewer and uh, discovered how slow it is to grow. Um, I'm still a very slow grower. I get about 100 new viewers a month approximately. Um, I guess over a year, that's... Okay, actually over a year, that's quite a lot. <laughs> 1,200. But... Uh, you know, so I'm, and most of that growth has happened over this past year. You know, I just like, as I've grown, then I seem to grow faster. It's a YouTube thing. But anyway, on IGTV, I'm going to be talking about some platinum pens. I was hoping I could talk about a platinum placer. I know I owned one. I did a review of one, but I must have given it away. Very nice pen. It's a dressed up uh, platinum preppy. So I don't know why I gave it away, but I must have felt... I had somebody that was worthy of it, so gave it to him. Uh, in other exciting news, let me uh, jump down out of sight here. I think I mentioned this in my last first impressions video. You may hear the cellophane and be knowing what's go what's coming here. But uh, I was uh, not, I didn't have a video ready for this week for first impressions because I was out of new pens. Um, as it turns out, I would have been okay. But at the time I was out of new pens when I was batch filming and didn't have any on the horizon. Uh, so a viewer stepped in and sent me, uh, I hadn't begged or anything. You You know, you see my videos. But uh, they just sent me some pens. And what's kind of fun is when viewers send me pens, they're not going to send me the expensive pens because you buy them for yourself. <laughs> but they'll send me their lower cost pens that they like. But if they're going to do that, they're going to send me pens that they like. So I get to find some good lower cost pens this way. So what I was sent, uh, this is a Daiso fountain pen. Uh, I look forward to trying that. I, th I feel like this might be this Monday's video. We'll see. Because I also have two more, well, one more Daiso that they sent me. I feel like there was a third. And, oh, there it is. Sorry, I didn't grab it. So a Daiso, I don't know, they might even be the same pen. I know nothing about the brand, so that'll be interesting. So Daiso, two Daisos. This Oh! I may have actually filmed a review of a similar pen. But it'll be fun to do just a a quick a first impression, even though if I don't do a full review on it. 
uh, a 3008. I think that's a Jin Hao. But yeah, I can see a lot more of it than I could on my, my the one I reviewed. So that's interesting. So those are upcoming. This Monday, the one that's going to be uploaded is going to be a Jin Hao 51A. And then on the vintage side, I ran into a couple prizes. Uh, and they seem to be cleaning up well. I have not uh, worked on that pen restoration video. These didn't. These took minimal work, so I didn't do a video on them. But this is a selector of some kind. Don't know. I uh, don't remember off the top of my head what it's called. But this is a, a Dutch brand from the Netherlands. Button filler. I have another selector. I really don't care for <laughs> i haven't been able to talk myself into to doing a video on it yet but uh so this is a much nicer one i don't know how it writes yet because i'm waiting for my first impression this was a a bowl bowl bowler has an umlaut on it anyway i'll be honest the color i like jade i've never owned anything made of jade but i thought this color actually looked like how i pictured jade so i bought it for that reason the nib is that a Bach nib? I'm wondering. So we'll find out. Also a button filler. And then a pen I don't recall ordering, but then I went back to the original listing and found out, oh, I actually bought two pens. I just didn't realize that. Same exact pen in a different finish. So I'm guessing, you know, especially considering how low cost these pens were, I mean, this would be we're talking like Twisby Eco level for the for what I thought was the green pen. And we're getting two of them. So I'm thinking this wasn't like a big name brand. Or these aren't really great pens from that brand. Um, I'm missing a pen here. Here we go. Uh, I found a, another Reform. A long time ago I reviewed a Reform student pen. This is another Reform. This one's different than that one though because it has a gold nib. Again, not a very expensive pen. Um, the nice thing about my vintage interests, I'm not going after the Mont Blancs or the Pelicans. Normally, I mean, I do have a few, but I go after the ones nobody's ever heard of. So they're usually a lot lower cost, and you get some surprisingly nice pens. That's I think, is going to be one of them. And then I got an expense, well, a little bit more expensive. Of the ones here, this is the most expensive pair. I could have done without the ballpoint. It's a... I don't think there's anything in it. Oh, there is. Okay. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> and, and you're thinking, well, didn't you know that before? Well, I have been behaving. First impressions and all that. And it's the ballpoint. I didn't care. Uh, but here is the main pen. This is an Inoxcrom, which is a... I think it's a f newer one. It's a Spanish brand. Oh, and I do keep doing that. It's a snap cap, not a screw cap. But anyway, it's a Spanish pen. I don't own a pen from Spain anymore. I know it's not Central Europe the way I usually like, but... Anyway, so... Now I have, what do I have? This many pens, however many it is, for uh, upcoming um, first impressions videos. So we'll be able to keep that going for a long time. I don't know that I have too many more pens on the horizon, but I have a few vintage pens I'll be restoring. So you can expect, uh, possibly, I'll do some first impressions of them after I restore them. Or do a restoration video and then show you how it writes as a first impression video. We'll see. Since I'm sharing exciting things, uh, they're not down here right at this moment, but those two Moster Pen Kala pens will be the next two weeks of reviews. Uh, if I can get time this weekend to film them, because I do need to organize my research. If I don't get time, then we'll just jump to some of the other possibilities, and you'll get the Moster Pen Kala after that, because... Uh, this has been a busy week, and I'm spending most of my Saturday at the school, too, for an obligation, so time this is a Schaefer that i'll be hopefully reviewing to my surprise it still writes it's been down in the basement for months because i just 
They haven't gotten to it. A Scrix 418, a Turkish pen. Uh, again, it's been in the basement for months, and yet I checked it. It's writing. And a Caveco, shoot, forgot its model. Well, anyway, it's a Caveco, and I actually don't know if that's writing or not. So, bonus that probably is not in the video description to this. Let's see if it's writing. Oh, it is not. And now it is. Okay. So, didn't start up like a champ after sitting down here all this time, but it did start up. And I have no idea what ink is in it. It's green, whatever it is. But you can see, I got it writing. So, uh, yeah, I better get that video filmed too so I can get these pens cleaned out and, uh, or re-inked and put back into general use. I heard an interesting take on books a couple of weeks ago that people who are true readers are going to have a lot of books around their house they haven't read yet. Um, and I know I'm that way. I, uh, I don't just keep the books as trophies, I... <laughs> Because I'll reread books too. But I, I keep them as, uh, sometimes I buy them with the intent to read them. And uh, I'm kind of the same way with pens too. So I have my expensive pens, but luckily, most, I just realized that that camera I've been talking to is not on. Luckily, now I'll face the camera. Luckily, most of the pens I like tend to be not at the super high end. Uh... Well, so I couldn't afford to do this. Uh, so eBay is your friend. Etsy is your friend. Every so often, myuberpens.com has some nice pens. Uh, Peyton Street Pens, although... Okay, no, I have purchased from them. Peyton Street Pens has some nice uh, vintage pens. Uh, not so often the ones I'm interested in, but they do have some nice ones. Uh, my Schaefer's came from there. Um, you know, you just got to be willing to keep your eye open and be willing to walk away. Uh, Amazon, if you like new pens, Amazon will, can put you in touch with retailers that you may not normally have heard of. Uh, like when you buy a Japanese pen, sometimes purchasing from a Japanese retailer helps a lot. Um, now I will say along with that, if there's something wrong with your pen, good luck. Uh, but uh, you know the, the Parker I have and the Pelican I have, the M800, are, were both purchased uh, through non-traditional retailers and I know some will say well you should be supporting US retailers and uh, I say it's a global market and uh, it's interesting that the same pen can have such a wide disparity in price in different countries uh, I did learn and live the inconvenience when I purchased that stipula which got to star in several of these pens and use videos because I purchased it from a Malaysian retailer and uh, that whole return and refund thing is a lot more difficult with a retailer like that, which has been good, actually, because uh, maybe it's me justifying it, but I've been forced to pursue other avenues. And when that pen makes its reappearance, we'll talk about what those other avenues are. But anyway, those are the pens I'm using this week. Uh, I'm sorry this was late. I just, uh, too much going on this week, and I, I, I can feel that I'm tired. I can hear that I'm tired of my voice, but... Uh, it's nice to come home and at least have Friday night free so I can think about something that's not school for a while, which is part of what this is. I just usually don't film it on a Friday. I usually film it uh, a different day of the week, like early in the week. But uh didn't happen this week because every night was something. So, uh, yeah, uh, Christmas break is coming in two weeks, and I will be batch filming like a madman during that. <laughs> And hopefully get way ahead on all my videos. And maybe by then, we'll have time to do some driving videos. I actually have some topics lined up, just no time to film them. Heck, I haven't even had time to film that last in the teacher series. So uh, look forward to that coming too. So I thank you for watching. Uh, and if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I'd invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to comment on any of the pens you saw here, the loop, the use of a 50 millimeter lens as a loop, or uh, some of the pens that you'll be getting first impressions for, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.